Welcome to Math 1300, Nunez Community College. This is section 3.4, which is going to be operations of functions. The first operation that we need to know is the sum. The sum is the addition of functions. So the sum says that f plus g of x f plus g of x is equal to the function f of x plus the function g of x. Once we add them together, we collect like terms, and that is the simplest form of the sum. We also have the difference. And the difference means to subtract f minus g of x. That is the function f of x minus the function g of x. And when doing this, you have to worry about multiplying the negative 1 times the g of x function. We have the product. The product is f times g of x. Again, we multiply the function f of x by the function g of x. And finally, we have the quotient. The quotient, which is f over g of x. And it is the function f of x over the function g of x. However, g of x, the function, cannot be 0. Because we cannot have 0 on the bottom or in the denominator of a fraction. So our domain is limited or could be limited if we have the quotient. So they're going to give us two functions and we're going to perform the operations that's indicated. In example number one, it says f of x, and I'll erase this, f of x is equal to 3x plus 1. f of x is the function 3x plus 1. And g of x is going to be x squared minus 5. They want us to perform each of the operations. f plus g of x, or the sum. To do that, it's the f of x function, 3x plus 1, plus the g of x function, x squared minus 5. We collect like terms and put the highest exponents in the front. So I have x squared plus 3x. I got a 1 and a minus 5, which is minus 4. This is f plus g of x. With the same two functions, we want to find the difference, f minus g of x. That's going to be f of x, 3x plus 1, minus g of x, as I said, when you subtract, you have to subtract the whole thing, so that's x squared minus 5. I put it in parentheses because this negative has to be distributed to both. So that gives me 3x plus 1 minus x squared plus 5. And now we collect the like terms and put the highest exponent in the front, just like we did on the last one. So it becomes negative x squared plus 3x plus 6. That is f minus g of x. Okay, for the product, we'll have f times g of x. And in this case, we have 3x plus 1. When it's multiplied, I'll put the parentheses, times x squared minus 5. This is two binomials multiplied together, so we can foil it, or double distribute, that would give me 3x to the third outside, negative 15x inside, giving you minus x squared, and last, minus 5. That would be 3x to the third, then we have minus x squared, minus 15x, minus 5. This would be f times g of x. 
And then finally, we're going to have the product, I'm sorry, the quotient. And in this case, we got f over g of x. That's going to be the f of x function, 3x plus 1, over the g of x function, which is x squared minus 5. We can't do anything more to it. However, we have to make sure that the denominator is not equal to 0. So we say that x squared minus 5 cannot equal 0. We then solve, bring the 5 to the other side. x squared equals 5. Take the square root. Take the square root. x cannot equal plus or minus the square root of 5. So that would be our answer. That would be our answer with the domain restriction of x cannot be equal to uh, plus or minus square root of 5. Okay, now we can also bear, um, we can also look at this and solve for different things. For instance, we could take the sum and we could look at finding the sum like f plus g of 3 instead of f plus g of x. What we want to do is find f plus g of x then substitute 3 in for the x. When we solve for that, we had what? We had x squared plus 3x minus 4. That was our f plus g of x. And now we're going to plug 3 in for our x's. So f plus g of 3 would be 3 squared plus 3 times 3 minus 4, which is going to be what? 9 plus 9 is 18 minus 4 is going to be 14. So f plus g of 3 just means find f plus g of x and then plug the number in for the x's to find a value, to find a value. Suppose I have f times g of negative 1. f times g of negative 1. Again, we find f times g of x, and when we did that, we had um, 3x squared plus x squared, 3x squared plus x squared um, minus 15x minus 5, minus 15x minus 5. So when we're trying to find f times g of negative 1, we're going to plug the negative 1 in and we're going to come up with 3 times negative 1 squared to the third, sorry, plus negative 1 squared minus 15 times negative 1 minus 5. And now we're going to evaluate, and that's going to be what? Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3, plus 1, plus 15 minus 5 which is going to give us, what, 16 minus 8, which is going to be 8. So f times g of negative 1 is equal to 8. And finally, we now have the composition of functions. Composition of functions. A composition of functions is when you take more than one function and you literally interweave it into another function. We have old school terminology, which was this, and we have new school terminology, which is this. It means the exact same thing. However, this to me shows me more about what is actually happening. This says I'm gonna take the g of x function and I'm gonna put it into the x of the f of x function. This says the same thing. Take the g of x function, put it into the x of the f of x function. This is read f of g of x. And this is read f of g of x. So either way you see it, you got to be aware that it means the same thing. Take the g of x function, put it into the x of the f of x function. So they're going to give us a couple of functions here. And they're going to ask us to do that. So it says if f of x is equal to 2x plus 7, 
f of x is equal to 2x plus 7, and g of x is equal to x squared plus 1, and g of x is equal to x squared plus 1, they're going to want us to find f of g of x. f of g of x. Again, new school, old school. They write it as new school. So we're going to take the g of x function, put it into the x of the f of x function. So we're going to take the g of x function, put it into the x of the f of x function. So that's going to read 2 times, instead of x, it's the g of x function that we're putting in. So that's going to be 2 times x squared plus 1, then the rest plus 7. That's going to be f of g of x. Now, of course, we're not finished yet. We have to do our operations, which is to distribute and then to collect our like terms. So that's going to be 2x squared plus 2 plus 7, which is going to be 2x squared plus 9. So f of g of x, old school, is going to be 2x squared plus 9. And that is the composite function f of g of x. However, they can also put any combination that they want in there. Instead of f of g of x, we could have g of f of x. g of f of x means take the f of x function, put it into the x of the g of x function. So take the f of x function, plug it into the x of the g of x function. That would look like 2x plus 7 squared plus 1. And now we would have to do other operations because 2x plus 7 squared means 2x plus 7 times 2x plus 7, which means we would have to foil it. So that would give me 4x squared plus 14x plus 14 more x from the inside plus 49. Or 4x squared plus 28x plus 49. And then that would be this, and then we'd have plus 1. So g of f of x would equal that. Now I have to combine my like terms so that g of f of x would equal 4x squared plus 28x plus 50. We don't even have to stop there. I could say, I could say possibly f of f of x or g of g of x. It just means take the whole f function, turn it back around and put it into the x of the f function. That would look like 2 times 2x plus 7 plus 7. And then again, we would distribute and come up with 4x plus 14 plus 7, which would be 4x plus 21. Okay, so there's any number of ways that we can do that. Or, or I could have, I could have g of f, g of f of a number, such as g of f of negative 2. g of f of negative 2. In that case, I already have g of f of x. I could take that and plug in negative 2 into my x's. So g of f of negative 2 would be 4 times negative 2 squared plus 28 times negative 2 plus 50, which would be what? 4, 4 times 4 would be 16. Uh, minus 456 plus 50, which would be what? 66 minus 56, which would be 10. So G of F of negative 2 
would be 10. And I guess you're wondering, why did I start here and end up doing this here? Because that's not the only way of doing it. You can find g of f of x, then take the negative 2 and put it into the x's and find g of f of 2. Or I could have started out and find f of negative 2. f of negative 2 would have been negative 2 times 2, which is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 3 is going to be, I'm sorry, negative 4 plus 7 is going to be 3. And then I could find g of 3. Since I found f of x, f of negative 2 to give me 3, I can now find this, plug this in, and I would have what? 3 squared, which is 9, plus 1 is 10. So either way, I can find either g of f of x and then plug in the negative 2, or I can find f of negative 2 and whatever number I come in with, bring it as g of that number, g of 3. And uh, that does conclude uh, this section, which is section 3.4. I will see you at the next one.